Hi, I'm Toby from AWS. Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today I'm joined by Sunil from Whirlpool. Welcome Sunil. Thanks Toby. Tell me a bit about Whirlpool. Whirlpool is the world's leading major home appliance company. Great. And what solution are you going to tell us about today? Today we're going to talk about our first SAP deployment on AWS and uh, how the key requirements when we were doing it about business continuity, architecture, and readiness for future to scale was resolved. Okay, great. So, uh, we've got a nice picture here on the, di on the board. Why don't you walk me through what we've got? So when we deployed this architecture for SAP Extended Warehouse Management, we chose uh, two availability zone in our region to deploy this distributed architecture. We had ASCS, which replicates lock using NQ replication server, and we had HANA database, which actually used HANA replication service to create redundant store in the second node of HANA. User would con and connect to ACS through NLB, and then they would be able to access SAP using secure network connection or using HTTPS over TCP connection. So, so what challenges did you face in terms of delivering high availability for SAP on AWS? That's an interesting problem and question, Toby. So when we were trying to deliver HA, the primary concern for us was, how do we have one static IP that would actually talk to two availability zones and nodes running in it, right? So we came up with a solution of uh, overlay IPs, which was then actually entries in route tables pointing to individual EC2 instances. So we got uh, three sets of overlay IP pointing to three individual services that we have, and we had NLB, which would actually point to route table to point to these overlay IP. So in nutshell, we have our alias, which would point to NLB, and then NLB through route table using OLA IPs could reach to each of these individual nodes. Neat, okay, great. So um, let's walk through that failure scenario. Let's suggest, say for example, we have a failure at the application tier. What happens next? So for SAP, as you know, we deployed a cluster to manage uh, monitoring and automatic detection. So in case one of these nodes would go down, what would happen is the cluster would act as an API to edit this route table and then replace this entry with an act the active node. So essentially, it would go back and point the OLA IP to the active node. And as soon as the secondary site, which failed, come back, the cluster would automatically register it to be the secondary node and start the replication back. It could be either HANA replication or the lock replication, and cluster would manage that. It would also manage the route table, so overlay IPs are always pointing to the active node. A key note there was, how do you manage the security around this route table and how do you access those APIs? So we created private subnets so that only instances running in these EC2 can access those API to modify the route table to provide robust security around it. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Sunil, for sharing. Thanks, Toby. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.